Hello everyone, Uncle Tech here. In this video, we are going to look into building our own lithium ion phosphate, aka Lifepo 12 volt battery for cars, mainly for my Toyota Prius Gen 3, but it should also be usable on most internal combustion engine cars. Okay, while I'm unboxing, let me explain a bit about this project. The reason I'm doing it is because I'm trying to explore lifepo batteries for cars and solar. The solar part I will post in separate video when I have time to edit the videos. As for cars, most important thing about the 12 volts are the CCA or cold cranking amp. It need to be high enough to crank up the ICE engines. For a Prius, this CCA is not that important as the 12 volts are only used to wake the high voltage battery up from sleep. Cranking the engine is done by the high voltage battery. That is why a standard AGM battery used in a Prius has 200 CCA and it can last around 5 years. This lifepo is supposed to be able to last 10 years. We shall see about that. Now, let's take a closer look at the batteries. Each cell seems to be in good condition. Important to inspect the cells to check for bulge. Does look good, clean and top grade. After inspecting the batteries, first thing I'm going to do is top balance the batteries. Essentially, a top balance means to charge all the batteries to full and at the same time all voltages are as equal as possible to each other. This will make sure the batteries wear and tear at the same rate. This is done by connecting the batteries in parallel. A parallel connection means to connect all the positives together and all the negatives together. Voltage will remain same but M hour will increase. Notice I aligned and connect the batteries in parallel. As I do not have extra copper plate, I'm using crocodile wired clips to connect the batteries. In this case, the thin wire should be sufficient. It is always important to note the potential amp that is going through a wire when you're connecting between devices or batteries because over, over amp will burn the wire and cause fire. Some people get the batteries through a couple of charge and discharge cycle, but I don't think that is necessary for new batteries, especially when these are grade A's. Um, so I'm just going to top charge them. Haha, <laughs> oops, I mistakenly did a 4S. It should be only 1S.
While the batteries are charging, let's solder wire on the BMS. Important to get BMS that is correct to the amp and battery type you are using. The reason is because different type of batteries have different voltage scale. Anyway, I suck at soldering. Do not know how to use flux. Do not like soldering. Hope this works out right. Hiya, look at the ugly soldering. It will do for now. Hope it works. So charging is done and uh, let's check the voltage. All seems to be fully charged and in almost the same voltage, so um, it's balanced. After wiring up the cells and connected to the BMS, let's check the CCA. We would like it to have at least 250 CCA. Well, this BMS is supposedly to be able to provide burst up to 800. Hmm, only 150, that's bad. Resistance should also be uh, always less than 10 milliohm. After a bit of tinkering and checking, I realized two issues, good contact points and high surface area. So I removed the BMS and connect directly to the battery. I sanded the copper plates to remove any oxidation that might be causing conductivity issue. I used copper plate and connector to connect to the clamp points so that it has more contact surface between battery and contact points. With that done, I can get 1900 CCA. That is very high and good. However, using the battery without BMS is not good for the battery lifespan. In conclusion, if you are going to build your own battery for car, make sure to use a good quality BMS that can handle the CCA. Make sure to clean the contact points and have as much contact surface as possible and use good quality cable and copper plates. So is it worth making your own 12 volt LiFo pole for a car? I would say no, unless you have lots of time to tinker with it and have experience building batteries. There are a lot of small caveats that uh, they do not tell you from those YouTube videos. Things like choosing right cable, proper copper plate, proper bolts, building correct case that can fit your car and so on. On top of that, building a case also takes a lot of time. The price is only slightly higher if you factor in the cost for the case. I know there are some people using recycled lead acid battery case but that is too much work in that direction. Believe me, I tried that. And not to mention the CCA will not maintain if you do not use good BMS. You will end up paying more than getting a ready-made 12 volt lifer pole. In the next video, I will compare using DIY lifer pole and ready-made lifer pole. So please subscribe to be notified of my next release. And remember to stay safe and stay healthy. Uncle Tech out.